Hey everybody, it's your old pal Hal, and today we're going to look at the top five things that new ukulele players need to know. If you just got a ukulele, then this is an essential list for you to get the most out of your instrument. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and uh, click the like button and the notification bell. It really does help push the channel along and uh, help YouTube know that it should share this content with everybody. Anyway, let's get going. <music> First thing we need to do is get to know our ukulele. There are many different parts, and when you're trying to communicate with other players, it's going to help if you know the correct names. So we'll start here at this end. This is the headstock. It is where the tuners live. These are the tuners. It's where the strings are attached. You might hear, hear them referred to as tuning keys. Then we move along, and this here, this black bar, or it might be a white bar on your ukulele, this is called the nut. That's where the strings pass over and enter the fingerboard, which is this whole section. The metal lines across here, or if you've got one of those newer ones with plastic lines, these are the frets, and they are counted from the nut. One, two, three, four, five. Notice that there's a dot there on the five, six, seven, two dots on the seven. These are indicators to help you count quickly while you're playing. And depending on your instrument, you may also have marks on the side. Anyway, the, num the frets count all the way up to the, to the body. This is referred to as your sound hole. Now it's a bit of a misnomer, but we're not gonna complain about that. It is the sound hole. And this here is your bridge. Now there's actually two names you're gonna hear about this. The bridge is the whole assembly. The bar that goes across here that the strings pass over, it's called the saddle. I don't know who named them, but that's the way it works. So all in all, if you're gonna talk about your instrument, you need to know what fret your chords are playing at, what fingers to put your fret, or what frets to put your fingers in is what I'm trying to say. You also wanna know that if somebody says, move that chord up the neck, they're talking about moving it up towards the sound hole. This is considered the bottom zero, the first floor as you will, if you will, when you get in the elevator and you're gonna go up the neck. Anyway, that's the first thing you need to know is all the names of the instruments. Oh, by the way, these are the strings. And that brings us on to our next point. The second thing you need to know is how to tune the instrument. Now, the ukulele is tuned G, C, E, A. This is known as a C6 chord as well. So you'll often see this tuning referred to as C6. Now that's with a high G, then it goes lower, and climbs up. This is what's known as re-entrant tuning. The note starts high and then re-enters the scale. Now, if you use the low G on here, which is one octave below this, you would call it a linear tuning. That's not really that important, but what is important is that these notes must be tuned. And there are many free apps that you can get for your smartphone to do a tuning if you uh, don't want to buy a tuner. Or you can buy one of these little guys here that clamp onto the end of your headstock and tell you the notes you're reading. There are many options, but you're going to need to know how to tune your instrument. When you tune your instrument, you, tune the, you, you turn the tuning keys uh, clockwise to sharpen the instrument, counterclockwise to flatten the note, to raise it or lower it. Now, that's going to be uh, one of your most prevalent duties as a ukulele player. And if this is a new ukulele, I'm sorry to tell you, it's going to go out of tune a lot at first. The strings need to stretch in and you're going to be tuning and tuning and tuning. But that's a good thing because you get used to the process and you'll learn uh, how it works. And once it settles in, you won't have to tune very much at all. I, I tune this one once every um, few days as I'm playing it. Usually it, it stays in tune quite nicely. The next thing you need to know is how to read a chord diagram. You're gonna be looking at a lot of chord diagrams in the next little while, and they can be confusing. But mostly what you're looking at is a vertical representation of your ukulele neck. So just like this one with my G string here, C, E, A, if I see a chord diagram like the one you see on the, the uh, screen beside me, it's this neck the way it is. So if I've got, I've got a C chord indicated there, I'm going to put my ring finger right there on the third fret on that first string, and that is my C chord. So that's the only thing you have to remember is that when you're looking at diagrams, they're like this. Occasionally, you'll see a chord diagram with a number on the side of it, like this one here. 
when you have that, that means that you're moving that cord up by the number of frets. So where that number is, is where you start that cord position. So if you had a fretted position that was a few uh, frets above that number, that's how it all works together. The fourth thing you're gonna need to know is how to strum. This is gonna be a question that's gonna come up time and time again, and you're gonna hear people talking about strumming patterns, strumming, how do you strum? Strumming is the practice of running your, your fingers across here, making the strings ring out. Now, there are many ways you can do it. First off, you can use your finger to cross over. You can use your thumb. You can use an open hand. I prefer the open hand method myself. Whatever is the most comfortable for you. What I've found is you're going to need them all as you play over, as you get more experience, you're going to sometimes want your finger, you're going to sometimes want your thumb, you're going to sometimes want that open hand. So find the one that suits you the best. Don't worry about whether it's the right one or the wrong one. The important thing to note is when you're strumming from above the instrument to below the instrument, that is a downstroke. And when you're coming from below the instrument, above the instrument, that is an upstroke. So all strumming patterns that you're going to find are combinations of downstrokes and upstrokes. And that's it. Now, there's a lot more to that, but we'll get into that at a later lesson because we can get into partial strums, we can get into finger picking, we can get into all manners of playing the strings. For now, downstroke and upstroke. Future Hal here, and I'm just interrupting this uh, video to send a special thank you out to all of my patrons. I have a site on patreon.com where people can pledge a certain amount of money to help me pay for these videos that you're getting for free. So please take a moment and follow the link, and if it's something for you, I hope you'll join our community. And uh, otherwise, thank you guys. The fifth thing, the very last thing on our top five list is to have fun. Remember that this is called playing music, not working music. So while it might be challenging at the beginning to get the hang of strumming or making a chord shape with your fingers, and you're gonna have to put a little practice and work in, it's supposed to be fun. Take some time to play the songs you want to play. Don't don't get caught up with, yeah, I need to learn this song or that song or this stroke or that stroke or, or whatever you want to call it. Just have fun. And that alone will keep you motivated to keep working on your instrument, to keep developing your talent. Find people to play with. Just share your love of the instrument with the world and you'll have a lot more fun. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you want to learn. Did I miss something you were wondering about? Anyway, I post regular ukulele content on this channel, and if you're interested, please subscribe, click that like button, and share this video with your friends. I'll see you next week. Ain't gonna rain no more no more. Ain't gonna rain no more. How in the heck can I wash my neck if it ain't gonna rain no more? It ain't gonna rain no more no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. How in the heck can I wash my neck? It ain't gonna rain no more. Peanut sat on a railway track. His heart was all a flutter. Round the bend came a number ten. Toot toot peanut butter. Oh.